Well, happy Thursday, friend. I know in that little intro ditty there, I just told you the next round of the DMP starts soon, and it does if you're listening real time. This is the final round of the Decision Masters program for 2022, and it is a program that combines one-on-one coaching with group coaching, and it's where you change the way you make decisions. You build new habits of being decisive and clear and efficient in your everyday choices, which, spoiler alert, makes big life decisions so much easier. So you still have time to book a consult if you want to talk about if this is going to be right for you. So book your consult. It's such a clarifying conversation. It's so fun to imagine life with without overthinking, to imagine yourself doing the things that you actually want to do and making the decisions and moving things forward. So good. And now I want to introduce you to Laura Brennan. Holy moly. She's so flippin' amazing. So we actually both live in LA and we got to finally get coffee now that the world is opening up again. And it was so much fun, but I've actually known her for about two and a half years, more than that by now. We met online when Yale Women, the alumni group, started doing like online social hours. Remember those at the beginning of the pandemic when everyone was like, what do we do? How do we be people in the world? I guess we just do it online. And we did that and we all thought it was going to be super temporary, right? But it has has kept going and some of us have kept attending week after week and we've built these amazing relationships with people we never would have met otherwise and it's just so much fun. So I brought her onto the podcast today because I think she's brilliant and she's going to help you declutter all of your ideas around your pitch. I mean, Laura Brennan is a pitch and development consultant. And you'll hear us when we get into the interview, we kind of just like start talking about pitching. So that's what we're talking about. Laura is a pitch consultant. In addition to many other things, she's worked on dozens of projects for TV and film productions, as well as startups and tech companies and nonprofits. And Laura says, no matter what you're pitching, your greatest strength is authenticity. Inviting people into your project through what truly lights you up. For the people who have a project or a business, you are either getting ready to pitch your book or your screenplay, or you're selling something, a service or a product, which means we're pitching all the time, right? This is going to help you so much and you're going to fall in love with Laura just like me. It's also going to help you if you are looking for your next career move. If you have a job interview coming up, if you are on an exploration mission where you're talking to people in your network because you're like, I don't know exactly what I want to do next. This is going to help you. Do not pass go. Do not change the channel. (laughs) You need to hear Laura's thoughts on how you can pitch to people when you are on a quest. Ooh, intrigue. Yeah, we talk about quests. Get excited. So I think her expertise is invaluable. I hope you love this episode as much as I loved having this conversation with Laura. Enjoy. Hi, Laura Brennan. Let's get started. Hi, Mr. Parker. <laughs> I'm so happy to talk to you today. Welcome to the Decision Masters world. Thank you so much. I'm really excited to be here. I'm loving your like tropical vibes that you have just for us too. You, pre- you specifically stationed your camera with like I a did. plant and like sea colors in the background. It's very on brand. So thanks. Thank you. Th- well, actually this, I mean, it, it is actually also on brand for me because what I, what I, one of the things I teach is, is how important it is to limit and curate what people see about you. Because everything, mm. so much, so much pitch, right? Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm someone who helps people pitch. And so much of pitching is done on Zoom these days. And you'll, you'll worry about your pitch, but then you'll do it in front of this cavernous room with, you know, remember the beginning of the pandemic with naked people walking back and forth, right? Like <laughs> I, all the distractions, no one is ever <laughs> going to listen or hear you, right? So no. walls are good. My husband just painted this wall. It's beautiful. It's a curated experience. And it's a curated experience. I really think one of the things I actually really wanted to say today is I actually think to some extent you and I are in the same business. For sure. You help people learn to make decisions and love them. Yeah. I'm a little bit meaner. (laughs) I force people to make decisions. (laughs) That is what pitching is. It's making decisions decisions about what you're going to keep in and what you're going to leave out. Yes. And like the curated backdrop is a beautiful metaphor for that because you just want, you just want enough in. it's not crowded, right? But there's enough in there to to entertain the eye a little bit. And like, if somebody, one of the things I have up here is I have my Maltese Falcon. So if you are not a fan of 
the movie The Maltese Falcon, that won't even register. It'll just be cool. But if you are, your eye will go to it and you'll go, oh my God, is that a Maltese Falcon? And now we've already Talking found point. something that bonds us together. Yeah. Right? It's how I want to be seen and by the people who want, you know, who are into that as well. And I just want to be seen in Bora Bora vibes. Yeah, you totally rock the Bora Bora vibes. Okay, I want you to talk more about pitching and what that is. But also, I think that's so brilliant and it's so true. We're in the same business and people need to be forced sometimes. I mean, that's literally what they pay you for. I've that's done literally what you, they pay me for. And I was they like, literally I need me. you to yeah. force me to like stop having this conversation on repeat and just finish the conversation in my head. And I think that's so fun because I'm a little bit of a semantics enthusiast, as you know, and the root of the word decision in Latin means to cut off. Yes. Well, but that's why it's so frightening for people. So the exactly. biggest thing I encounter, I help people. Th so log lines are my superpower, right? That's, that's really what I do well. And I help people with their log lines and log lines are very short. And this can be a log line. You know, I work in the entertainment yeah, industry. Explain so what a log, log line is just in case. Okay. In the entertainment business, the log line is basically give me your, the story that you're, that you want to tell the story of your screenplay, the story of your movie, right? Give me that story in a sentence that I can understand if it's right for me or not. But I also work in businesses. I work with a lot of startups. I work with a lot of entrepreneurs. I work with some nonprofits. I work a lot in the tech industry because they people in tech tend to really know what their thing will do, but aren't great at communicating how it will transform someone's life. Right? So the log line yeah. is the same thing. The log line is a sentence or two really short that just gives the information someone needs to know to figure out if your if your product, if your the experience you provide someone, whatever it is that you are offering to the world, if it's right for them or not. Yeah. So the metaphor I like to use is think of it as a tuning fork. Whatever your project is, it's your new business, it's it's um, it's your novel, it's your art, it's your passion. It's like it's whatever it is that the project you're talking about. It's a, it's a tuning fork yeah. and your job is to take all the cotton wool that you've wrapped it up in with too many words and too many things you want to get people to understand, right? And too many things you're not willing to let go of. You got to unwrap it from all that cotton wool so that when you hit it, it vibes purely. Mm -hmm. And that vibration, the people who are into that are going to hear it and want it. And the people who aren't into that are going to hear it and not want it. And that's okay. Mm. Amen. Right? That's the thing that's got to be okay because yeah. they're not right for it. Right. Like, there are some people I cannot delight. Right. And if I cannot delight <laughs> yes, them, and that's fine. That's fine. They're not right. It's not, it wouldn't be a good experience for them or for me. Right. We should not work together. <laughs> like, yeah. It's yeah. just that simple. And so I want to be so clear what I do that those people self-select out to begin with. And we don't have to have that experience. What you had said about decision, the route being to cut off. Yeah. But it's frightening for people. They think more is better mm -hmm. because they're unwilling to, to sort of cut off that potential future or that potential person or that potential. They're unwilling to cut it off. But all that does is by not making a decision, by not figuring out exactly what it is, by not being willing to communicate exactly what it, you're up, who you are and what you're up to, it's just wrapping cotton wool. And so the people who want you or want that project can't find you because you're not vibrating. Yeah. It ain't happening. And I don't mean this in a woo-woo way, right? This is strictly a metaphor for me. <laughs> no, and but it's like, you've got to let people in on and it's who also you like, really it, are. Pheromones, I feel like are a good example. That's a, people that's understand great, that that's, that's a great it's, example. It's biological. It's like, and it's mm -hmm. like cilantro and soap, right? Some people, yeah. I can't get yeah. enough cilantro. Some people, right. it's I'm like, not why are you putting camp. soap in my guacamole? Here's the thing that I do for people, which I think is also incredibly liberating, not just in sort of the pitching room right? But like in your life yeah. is I, I remind them that, that, that single sentence, or maybe two sentences that, that tiny bit at the top that we call a log line 
are not the only words that will ever come out of their mouth. Yes. Right. You the just stakes aren't as it. high as our brains make them in our minds. That's exactly right. You, if you're cut. Yes, you are. You are making choices. You're cutting things out, but you get to save them for later. Yeah. And the I, reason I think anyone can work with you and get value from you, any of your people, right? You're right. right people is because we're always selling something, whether oh. that's literally pitching a book or a move like a screenplay or an idea, but also like interviewing for a job, talking to investors, inviting people to a curated brunch. If people are still doing that, like, I think you're always selling something. Right. I actually don't use the term selling because yeah. selling just brings like, it's just, it's not that it's not accurate, loaded. It's, yeah. but it's loaded. Most of the time, you're always pitching, you're pitching, right? Right? Most of the time, what you're doing is I call it, you're opening up your box of toys. And this (laughs) is what you're going to play with today. (laughs) This is what we're playing with today. Right. And so if you want to play with this, with these toys with me, then I would love to play with you. That would be so fun. Yeah. Right. You're just inviting them in like your curated brunch idea. You do what? Like your five besties to all meet each other. Right. So you're pitching it to them. <laughs> exactly. And that's I love, all the time. The semantics nerd in me is loving this conversation too, because it's like, what does selling mean? Whatever you make right. it mean. Right. That's right. Right. It's really empowering to think I get to decide what I'm doing here. Am I walking into a room trying to convince people that I am worthy of being an author or like trying to uh, Let me suggest that that's them, never a good idea, right? Like, <laughs> or, or am I, tr- am I walking into this interview? I'm thinking of all the subconscious mindsets that we can walk into rooms, not knowing we right. have, cause we haven't set our minds intentionally. Right. So am I walking into an interview with the subconscious intention, the, the non deliberate intention that I need to convince them I'm a good worker And what we're talking about is empowering yourself to decide, what am I here to do? Am I here to pitch an idea that I'm in love with? So I also, you know, obviously I follow you like mad and, you know, taking a bunch of your workshops, (laughs) I adore you and, and other coaches as well. Thought work has changed my life. Like I'm, I'm all in on it, but I was doing this before it had an eight, right? So I've been doing this for like 20 years. just because like just in my my little niche because i realized that what was keeping people from succeeding was not necessarily that they were pitching badly it was that they weren't pitching yeah and they weren't pitching because they believed they were being used car salesmen right by pitching right they were being all sleazy and so they didn't of course they didn't want to pitch that felt awful why would they want to pitch, right? (laughs) Like that just feels terrible. And so every time I I gave a talk, every time I worked with somebody, everything I went, I I teach in a bunch of different MFA programs and at different colleges and universities, bring me in as a guest speaker. Every, the first thing out of my mouth is if you get nothing else from this, I just want to change your mind about what pitching is. Mm -hmm. This is the keys to the kingdom. Pitching isn't selling. Pitching is just showing what you're excited about right now. It's opening up your box of toys. So I've been doing that for a, for a long time. And the same is true. So I I use the example of movies because I think it's super clear. Like people, people have money to make, you know, a love story and you bring them a horror film and it's just ain't gonna, you know, it's not gonna work. Exactly. Yeah. But it's also true. Like in business, I work with a lot of startups that are doing things in the medical field. Mm. And, and some of them are for specific illnesses. And so this is kind of, you know, very direct, but like they, they'll have a solution for right. a specific problem, like sickle cell anemia with one of the clients I worked with. They have a solution for that particular problem. But if that is not your problem, mm-hmm. you're not going to purchase their solution. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing they could say is going to make that because it's just not, it's just not where you are, right? It's just not the thing. So that's a bit extreme, but really everything is like that. And you have to take out of the equation, the idea that you're for everyone, because the minute you say you're for everyone, you're really for no one. Like, boy, is that cotton wool, right? I literally just saw a commercial for some casino resort around here. Their marketing campaign right now is something for everyone. And I was like, I'm not going there. (laughs) 
who, what am I to expect when I walk in? Like, right. <laughs> something for everyone. Right. right. Oh, I want something for Kirsten. Right. And when you find that, you cannot wait to give them your money. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm just relating this to anyone listening who might not have like a screenplay to pitch to a Hollywood producer, but you do have a job that you want to interview for, or you do have a business that you want to start selling people on, or you have, um, career curiosities that you want to invite people to like indulge and talk to you about. If you have a family vacation that you would love to make happen, you can use this, this framework that Laura is offering of like a log line can be very clarifying and simplifying because all of those involve a pitch. Right. Right. So a log line to me, a log line does two things for you. I, I just, it's, it's the thing that I offer the most because it's the thing that's the most useful to anyone. Like I do other stuff. Like I help people with Ted talks. I do other stuff, but But the thing that's for everyone is a log line because it does two things for you that you can use daily. You can use all the time. So one thing it does is I believe that your log line is your true north. Like for people who are writers, I tell them to write the log line before they've written the screenplay. Write the log line before you've written the novel. Mm. Write the log line because the log line distills what it is you're actually doing. And it keeps you on track when you kind of get lost in the weeds. Yeah. You know, which happens all the time. That happens to all of yeah. us, right? It happens all the time. Yeah. So a log line is your true note. But the same is true if it's your business. Because especially early, I don't know about you, for me, especially early in my business, like I just said, I do I do other things for people. Early in my business, I did anything you needed. All right? the things. Who I wants did coaching? All the things. <laughs> right? I was trying to build a business. Yeah. <laughs> I did all the things. And what happened was it got really diffuse. And um and I did things that, you know, were not in my zone of genius, the way mm-hmm. log lines are. And it wasn't that I did a bad job. I didn't, but it wasn't fun. That's not ultimately the business I wanted to build. Yeah. And so my log line really is that log lines are my superpower. Yeah. I mean, which is crazy short, but Log lines are my superpower really conveys what I do and it conveys it to me. Yeah. And so as a decision making lens, it's it's ideal because if something is in the realm of log lines, well, that's my superpower. Of course, Mm -hmm. I'm going to step up and do that. And if somebody comes to me and they want something else, I have to really run it through that. Is it close enough to my superpower that I will be able to delight them? And if it's really not, if it's something that, you know, other people can do or other people I know could do better, I say no. And I, I suggest they speak, you know, I talk to, I, I offer them somebody else if I have somebody else in that realm. Yeah. And yes, sometimes it means I am turning money away for sure. It means that, but I'm also staying true to what I really bring to the world right? What I really bring to the table, what I really bring to the world. So that is one thing I think that a log line does that is incredibly important. It can be your true north. It can be a decision-making lens. It can remind you, like it's for you is one of the ways it's so important. It can remind you who you are and where you pull your strength from. Yeah. And it comes back to that cutoff too, right? Yeah. I want you to tell us the second thing a long line is, but I think that's just such a great, it's like, we're not being naive about the fact that once you own a log line in whatever context, this is like, this is my superpower. This is the thing I'm going to offer. This is the career I'm going to pursue. This is the family vacation. This is what I bring to the table. Yeah. Like when you own that, it does mean that you say no to other things. And we're just owning that that doesn't always feel delicious in the moment, but what right. it's, what the picture you're painting is of a person who consistently makes decisions in alignment with what they pre-decided was important. Right. That's and true. You end up I, with pre-decided, this pile of decisions. I yeah. pre-decided that it was important for me to be able to do the work that I do best. Yeah. I pre-decided that that was what really mattered to me as opposed to so like at one point i helped people with their websites and one of the things i found with the websites was it always sprawled 
like if I wasn't actually putting the stuff up on the website, it wasn't getting up. Mm. And that's not my zone of genius. Like I'm competent at it, yeah. but it's not, it's not fun. It's very stressful. I was just not, and I'm like, you know what? No amount of money is actually worth this mm. because I'm not able to show up as my best self. And yeah. I really wanted, like, I, you know, I did make that pre-decision that was more important to me to show up as my best self and to give from what I do best yeah. than it was for me to make more money. Yeah. But it and hasn't that... stopped me from being able to build a business. Like, I, I on the contrary, right. that's the thing, is that once I decided, right. once I really went all in on this is what I do then I found more of the people who wanted exactly what I did and everything just became easier. <laughs> yes. I always think in terms of like, what flips the light switches on for overthinking? Like what just is like, Ooh, we're going to lose a, we're going to lose a week and a half to this right now. And we're going to drain a bunch of our energy on this. And so much overthinking happens because we don't have that lens in place or that filter in place. Right. So when somebody does come up to you and is like, would you like to build my website for me? That just flips the switch open because it's like, well, I should consider this. And I do, do I want this? And I'm rethinking my whole existence and like no guidance for your own brain to follow. Like, what are the most useful questions to ask now that I've been presented with this opportunity? We're clocking things like, how can we always overthink less and less and less? The log line is a beautiful way to do it. So the second thing log line is, is it allows you to tell other people what you do. Yes. Like the first is for you. Right. First is your decision lens, your true north, your reminder, like keeps it. But the other thing is it gives a way for you to tell people what you do so that they can see if it vibes with them, but also so that they can tell other people. Yeah. Right? You're not explaining every little detail. You're giving something short and memorable. Yeah. <laughs> and like you are the coach for decision makers, right? You are the decision making coach. That's what you do. Yeah. Nailed and you, you know, and so if, you know, my foot hurts, I don't come to you. Correct. Yes. <laughs> right. And if I want to like learn how to make a brioche donut, I don't come to you. That's exactly correct. Boy, you definitely do not come to me for anything in the realm of the like kitchen. We could take that class together or just that like would find fun. a bakery, but yes, it helps you. So it helps you communicate with yourself clearly. And then it helps you communicate with others clearly. Like, and that, what am I that here is for? really am I underrated. That would be the one thing I would give people to understand in the world. Like, uh, okay, first of all, change your mind about pitching. <laughs> pitching isn't selling. Like that's keys to the kingdom. But the second thing is letting people know what you do just letting your current network, letting people who already like you know what you're up to, your possibilities of success just explode. It, yeah. And having a log line gives you a really simple way to do that. I mean, it's called networking, <laughs> but which also gets a bad rap. But if the idea, if you just really think of networking as just like a network in your brain of neurons or just the things that connect in your brain. All you're trying to do is like, just connect with people, ideally over something fun, because there's yeah. enough stuff in our lives that, you know, that is not fun. So if you're just connected yep. with somebody over like this fun new thing you're up to, Hey, I just started a business. Hey, I'm just starting a nonprofit. I'm opening a blah, blah, blah. I'm opening a bakery, right? I've just finished my novel. Each of those projects, if you just have a really clear way of saying what it is, and you just let people know, isn't this exciting? I'm doing like, yeah. you're not asking for anything. You're just letting people know people are going to be so excited and they'll do two things. One of the thing is they'll tell, Hey, did you hear, did you hear what Kirsten's up to? Oh my yes. God. This is so fun. And that spreads the word for you. Yep. You've given them what they need to be able to spread the word for you. Yeah. The other thing they'll do is the people yeah. who are into that will bounce back to you with often some offer to help you. Oh my God, you're throwing a surprise party for your husband. That's so fun. Do you need someone to bring homemade pickle relish? I don't know. Yes, I the, brio up, right? the brioche donuts. Think of yourself. Like when somebody tells you something fun that's going on or that's happening in their life and it's something that vibes with you, you almost can't help yourself. Like something will bubble up mm. inside and you will want to share from your zone of genius 
maybe you make amazing brioche donuts, right? And you will totally want to share that. Yes. And it will, the offer will just come bubbling up. And that's how we have great lives. Like, I just think that I, like, it all comes down to long life, but really networking and sharing what you're up to is like, that's how we have great lives and so much fun and so much real connection. And I'm, yeah, I'm obviously I'm an enthusiast. Right. Yeah. You're throwing confetti for it. Right. It's a multi-purpose tool. I think the way that you're describing yeah. it can be absolutely That's applicable so to someone with, like we said, a business, a job, mm-hmm. a career, an event. When you want to spread the word, like me, decision coaching for overthinkers, like tell everybody Yeah, anti-overwhelm clinic. Like we got to tell everybody because that's what I'm currently <laughs> like, right. doing. Anti-overwhelm cl- clinic. Yes. Really. We can use the log line to just enthusiastically share and invite. I, we talk about this all the time in coaching, like inviting people to join in your energy about something. Yes. That's a great way of putting it. And in fact, so your anti that I'm so glad you mentioned it. Your anti overwhelm clinic. Yeah. It's that just that name of it. Yeah. That's like a little log line, right? Because it yeah. makes it Done. so clear what it is. Right. Yes. So, so, and what happened was the day that you sent that out that morning, I had had a, um, a meeting with a, a bunch of colleagues. We, we meet every week and via zoom and, um, overwhelm was one of our topics. And so when that came, I instantly knew who it would be good for. And Ugh. I sent out the email saying, oh my gosh, we were just talking about this. There's the right? formula in action. That's a formula in action. It's exactly that. And I didn't even think about it because it was just like, oh my God, that's a great fit. Let me just put these two things together. Yeah. So it's useful for the person who already is clear. It's also useful for the person who is looking to get clear, right? You can have a log line about a question you have or a curiosity you're pursuing, right? Or yeah. Or if you're looking for a job or for whatever, it's exactly the same thing. It's just your project is your quest. Yes. I That's love that. Is. Just your like I tell your people quest. your question can be your goal. Yeah. If people think I can't have a goal until I answer the questions about what do I want? And it's like, let's make answering the question, the goal. I love that. Your project is your quest. Right. Right. Yeah. So at one point in my life, I was looking for a tuba is the example <laughs> I tend to use, right? Because right. My, feel like my, son, my son's grown now. He's in college. He still plays the right. tuba, right? But at the time he was in middle school, <laughs> he was playing the tuba. And I did not really at that point want to invest in a new tuba. Those things are expensive <laughs> Yeah, for, for, you know, for a, basically a 10 year old, 11 year old who for like a month may or, or two, may not right? yeah. be interested in it. And so I was looking for a secondhand tuba from another band parent who had been through the same thing maybe a few years earlier. And so that was like how I introduced myself at all the PTA meetings and all the band meetings. I'm like, I I wanted to become known as the woman looking for the secondhand tuba. Yes. And, and in fact, all my friends were on board and I got a call from a friend saying, oh my God, I just saw tuba on Craigslist. <laughs> oh my gosh. See you guys listen up. Oh. This is powerful. So yes, your quest, but that just think of your quest. I think we think of quests. Here's the problem is I think we think of quests as supplications, right? Like somehow if we need something or we want something, we are lesser. Oh, for and sure. So we are supplicants in the conversation. I can't let that everyone just, know. I can't no. look. Right. Like, that's not true. Mm-mm. That's not true. In fact, a quest is such an, ex- I mean, think of all of the great literature, right? That's based around these, these heroic quests. Yes. <laughs> a quest is something that's incredibly enrolling. People love to be part of something like that. You can just say what you just say, what you're looking for and let people offer, like start there. Yeah. Because they will offer things you didn't think to ask. Cause they'll always, people will always offer from what they do best. You're going to get their best self when you just sort of let them know what you're looking for. The thing you have to let go of is this idea that there are magic words. Right. And because so, we don't make decisions with words. Right. We make them with feelings. You help people find the log line that's going to communicate the correct authentic right. feelings. I use that term all the time. Mm. It's not about getting it right. It's about making them feel it. Yeah, it's not about so getting them to understand that. all the little details, right? It's about, oh, that's what I get confetti for? Heck yes. yes. No making it oh. right. No get no pressure to get it right. No, 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 no. It's not that. It's not about, they're not taking a test on it. Right? Yes. It's about making them feel what it is. And this is true whether what it is is you and the, how, how you will be part of their team 
or it's it's your startup and how it will change the world or it's your movie or your novel and how it will make them feel when they experience it. And you actually don't need very much to convey that. And then if they if that is juicy to them, they will say something that expresses interest. They'll literally say something like, tell me more. Yeah. And then you get to tell them more. Again, you're still not going to spell everything out, but you're going to make them feel on a deeper level what it would be like to play together, right? What it would be like for them to work with you, what it would be like for them to experience your your genius or experience your movie or experience whatever it is. But you don't need that much time to take them through the experience and you want to leave them with goosebumps. Like you want to leave them on fire. And then if they feel it too, they're a good fit for you. And if they don't feel, my son had a teacher once who no matter what you talk to him about, he was just bored. It was never going to work. Like we were never going no. to really connect. And that's fine. He has other people with whom he connects beautifully. I was not that person. Yeah. And I think as overthinkers, especially can take personal responsibility mm. in, in those kinds of situations. If somebody doesn't hire you, if somebody doesn't text back to you, right. You can take it so personally. It's never you. It's them. It's just, it's the, just the way the it is. pitch wasn't tuned to what they wanted to hear. And it's fine. Right. And that's fine. It's and we can stop wasting our time. Lots of other people in the world. We can, right. yeah, we can, we can, we can use our time better to go find yeah. the people who want to hear the song we're singing. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. That's exactly it. <sighs> okay. I could talk to you for hours, but I want to be respectful of your time at all. And so <laughs> I'm going to ask you my three interview questions. I want to ask about coaching and you yeah. already shared, you follow lots of coaches. I am. And I am. I do have a coach and you have a coach. Yes. Yeah, so I and... for coaching. I follow coaching. I like love lots of coaching. Me too. Same to and you've attended lots of, up until like last month, I think we had worked together in a free capacity. Like you came, came to master yes. classes that I offered. And then last month, I think you did the clarity workshop, which was like did. under a hundred dollars. Oh my and God. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And it was so it was like so much value. <laughs> Tell us, tell us, so tell us as a consumer of coaching, because I always want to demystify this experience for people. And you are a great example, I think, of how you can get value and decide on your terms. What am I going to get? What am I going to invest? So one of the things that I found right early on with you, even doing your, doing the free stuff that you were doing was that you had a way of looking at coaching and thought work that was a little different from the way my brain worked. And I loved that because what it did was it gave me a new, a new lens, right? It gave me a new lens, a new way of looking at things. So one of the things, for example, that you said that just blew my mind was the idea that you could kind of make a decision and then practice making those decisions in a low stakes environment. You could practice being the person that you want to be in low stakes so that when the stakes are high, it's there. You don't have to reach for it because it's there. And I'm like, hold the phone. Ooh, what? <laughs> That's so fun. I can just practice this. That was so, like, that gave me so much clarity because it allowed me not to have to think about high stakes, oh, right? Yeah. It allowed me to just look for the possibility of showing up the way I wanted to show up in low stakes environments. And just practicing that thing. Like for me, boundaries, Bound, you know, for all I'm all about decisions, like boundaries are hard. It is hard for mm -hmm. me to say no. Mm -hmm. And so I could practice that in a low stakes way. Yes. Before somebody came at me with, will you do this big project for me? I don't have to worry about like whatever thing is going to sort of fall into my lap that I then have to make all of these individual different decisions about because it's right. not exactly the thing that has fell into my lap last week. Right. Instead, I can just practice boundaries on little things so that I can make a cleaner decision when something brand new appears. Mm -hmm. I just that boy, whoo, that was that was fantastic. So I don't know if that answers like how I consume coaching. <laughs> no, I think it's great. I think it's, it's also wonderful permission 
especially for good student, A plus above and beyond brains to take one thing from something. Yeah. Like listen to a whole podcast interview and remember one thing, attend a workshop and take one thing away. That is the one most important, most resonant thing for you, who you are that day. Yeah. Yeah. And then run with it. Right. Run with it. Second question. What kind of decision maker do you consider yourself to be? Oh, um, I'm a, I'm a pretty good decision maker. I don't know that I was necessarily born to be a great decision maker. I think that I, I was a great decision maker and then I kind of lost it for a while and I have it back now, but I, I make decisions. I tend to make decisions out of who I want to be in the world. My mm-hmm. husband once said, we, 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 um, we made a big life choice, uh, when my mother got Alzheimer's and we sold our place and my parents sold their place and we bought a house together we moved in with my parents my son was three at the time my mother was very ill right she had alzheimer's and um and she needed a lot of care and my husband phrased it when we were talking about doing this he's like you make the decision that you can live with without regret and so on the one hand i make the decisions that line up with who I am as a human being Mm. so that I can live without regret that that Mm. really align with who I am. But the other decision is I decide to live without regret. Ugh, confetti. Somebody listening right now didn't even know that decision was an option, but it is. So thank you for sharing that. You're welcome. Final question. What's the most self-honoring decision you've made in the last week that you want to share with us? Oh, all right, so I decided to take a clown class. I don't know. This may be this may be <laughs> with one of the world top like kind of he he teaches at Yale, which is for both of us our alma mater. Although I was their undergrad, so he teaches at the drama school, and he 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 has this Zoom class out of his studio in Brooklyn, and I decided to take it, even though it really like on paper makes no particular sense, <laughs> but. The self-honoring decision is not actually to take the class. That is not what I'm, but, but in the last week taking the class, I realized that, cause it's really, it's not about like big noses and big shoes, right? Funny noses and big shoes. It's really about sort of finding the interior person who speaks truth to power, like finding and connecting to your, almost your inner gesture as opposed to your inner clown. Right. Mm. And I made the decision that I was going to go deeper and really go all in, even though it was painful. And I was going to be more honest with myself Mm. and more honest in the class because I was kind of catching myself, like being a little surface performing. And this is a class that really wants you to open your heart. And, and, you know, there's a, there's something about writing. I think it was Hemingway writing is, or Faulkner writing is easy. All you have to do is sit at a typewriter and open a vein, right? Yeah. (laughs) And that's what this class is. Right. It's like you you have to show up and you have to open a vein. And I was kind of performative and not really open a vein. So I made the decision to open the vein. And what I found that I got out of it was a level of peace from going so deep that I really didn't know I had access to. Wow. I don't know. This is probably way too much for your podcast. (laughs) No, (laughs) but I guess if you look at it, that I, it was self-honoring because I believed in myself and I and how I wanted to show up. I wanted to show up as someone who was willing to open that vein. Yeah. Right. I wanted to show up as my full self. And 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 so I made the choice to do it when I realized I wasn't. You wouldn't believe how often you probably would because you listen to this podcast, but how often I ask people just in in coaching too this question. Like, let's celebrate a decision. What's the decision that you want to own as a good decision, a self-honoring decision, whatever. And it is very common to like downplay it and say like, either this is, this is too much, or this is too stupid, or this is like, this is so weird, but I swear. I I think this would fall into this is so weird category. (laughs) It's a valuable story you're sharing because someone, I mean, it's valuable for you to share it. I feel like it's your log line, right? Full circle. It's valuable for you. 
to right. just yes, it's reflect valuable back for me. on like, this is a self-honoring decision. I am a person who makes self-honoring decisions. That is good information for me to have. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really valuable. Like on behalf of the millions of listeners of the decision masters podcast, I am, I thank you because somebody is going to give themselves a teensy bit more permission to be a little more vulnerable, be a little more honest, allow themselves to a little richer experience. And they're going to have you to thank for it. Oh, that is sweet. <laughs> I, I like that. I will take that. I will take Thank that. you. Thank you for receiving. Tell everyone, oh my gosh, everyone needs to hire you now to like get their log lines. So how do people find you? Where do they follow you? How do they get in touch? Best place to find me is uh, on my website, which is pitchingperfectly.com. It'll be linked in the show notes. Thank you for talking to us and sharing your wisdom and your joy and your enthusiasm. It's so energizing. It and so I feel fun. like everyone can't wait to create their log lines. So fun. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Laura. Bye. Hey, want to find out your decision style? Um, Obviously, go take the decision style quiz. It's in the show notes and at kirstenparker.com forward slash quiz. We all have our style when it comes to making decisions, but do you know how to use your default way of thinking to your advantage? Or do you mainly get stuck in the most annoying parts of overthinking and people pleasing? The decision style quiz has your answers, my friend. Take it right now at kirstenparker.com forward slash quiz.